Hello and welcome to the hearing. I'm John. And from Chicago's North Side, I'm Scott. And without any further ado, on to this week's album, which is from 2020, specifically yesterday, as we're recording this um, <laughs> on a Wednesday night. Um, Fantasizer by Freeze Pop. Freeze Pop is an American synth pop band formed in Boston, Massachusetts in 1999. The band took their name from the popsicle like frozen snack and have described their music as, quote, sweet and cold and fruity and plasticky. Um, Fantasizer is the band's fifth studio album. It was released on October 6, 2020 on Arch Enemy Records, produced by Sean Drinkwater, and features, and I'm getting this list from Wikipedia, um, most of this list, at least the band members, um, because on the record it just lists their names, so I wanted what they play. Um, Liz Enthusiasm on vocals, the other Sean T. Drinkwater on synthesizers, programming, and adding this part, I think guitar, he does play guitar, I think I hear some guitar on the album, um, Robert John Bananas Foster on guitar, and uh, Christmas Disco Marie Sagan on synthesizers and vocoder, with great assistance from the Duke of Panacokin, Five or Maybe, and Ichabod Screamface, and Guest Whispers by Gordon Merrick, like one of two people who use their real name on this, <laughs> three people. <laughs> I was going to say, these sounds like they could be bandmates for Guar, doesn't it? Yeah, well, most of them use uh, <laughs> stage names. Um, yeah. I know the Duke of Pentecokin is um, the former third member of the band. Originally, they were a trio. He was their programmer, or as they've referred to him, their sonic architect. Um, Casting Crocker is his real name. Um, Ichabod Screamface, I think his real name is Al Crockett. He's their current percussionist. I think he's actually a band member now. Um Five or maybe I googled. I, I could not find anything about them, so I have no idea who they are. Um, now on to the tracks. Reminder, I don't edit any songs into our reviews for copyright reasons, but down in the description, if you're listening to this on YouTube or on our blog at johnandscotto.com, you'll find links to Fantasizer on Bandcamp. I checked earlier today. It's not on Spotify yet, um, no, but yet. Bandcamp's better. Um, for those who don't know, Bandcamp is a music store for specifically for independent artists, um, they not only allow you to stream the entire album for free, but if you choose to buy it there, they give a larger cut to the artist. So whenever an artist is on Bandcamp, we like to, you know, include that link. And right now, as far as I know, that's the only place you can go listen to it. I mean, I think you can probably buy it other places, but if you're going to buy it, buy it from Bandcamp. Anyway, yeah. on to track one, Queen of Tomorrow. This one is just a nice, upbeat opening song. Um... Glad to hear some, I think, guitar. Um, Sean does play guitar, uh, so, and, and he's quite good from what I've heard, so I, I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, I, I don't know much about keyboards. Um, actually, revealing synth pop albums has me at a little disadvantage. Um, <laughs> it's it's a really good intro, though. I think oh, yeah. I, I was trying to determine whether it's a synth or a guitar. I think it's a guitar played through an auto-tuner, maybe? It's heavily affected. Um, yes. It's got a ton of effects on it. Um, I, I've been playing guitar for 35 years. I play bass. I recently moved percussion with any rock band. I have a basic knowledge of how to play everything with synth pop and, and with rock bands, the division of labor is pretty obvious with synth pop. You don't really know who's playing what it's all except right. for the guitar and the vocals. It's all synthesizer. So it's harder to describe. I technically play keys. I know where the notes are. I know chords get chord and scale construction, but I I'm not a keyboard player by any means. So, you know, I dabble with synths and sequencers, but, you know, my knowledge is nowhere near what it is with a conventional rock band. So a bit of a disadvantage on this review. And as I was when we do, and as I am when we do hip hop and, and synth pop in the past. Um, anyway, like I said, nice, upbeat opening, great groove. Nice to hear some guitar. Like, it sounds like a Rick Wakeman keyboard only played on guitar somehow. So, yeah, it is really yeah. interesting. And it really it really does grab you with the first thing. That and, and her, like, kind of Duran Duran kind of vocals mm -hmm. that she, you know, puts on over it. <laughs> I, I'm reasonably sure it's a guitar. I don't know much about keys, but I, I've been playing guitar for decades. And I know I hammer on and pull yeah. off when I hear one. So I'm pretty sure it's a guitar. Um, the harmony, speaking of the vocals, really nice on the pre-chorus and chorus. And there's a nice drop after the first chorus that goes into the second verse. Um, like the kind of distorted lead synth at the end of uh, the pre-chorus, the second end of the pre-chorus into verse two. Um, and it's 
kind of does this bendy part at the end during the fade as well. Um, I know a pitch bend is an obvious thing, a common thing on a keyboard these days, but I still love hearing them. Um, it's just a little wheel that raises and lowers the pitch of the note being right. played. Right. Um, it's basically for the guitar players. It's basically a tremolo, a, basically a Floyd Rose for keyboards. Um, Floyd Rose is the tremolo system, raises them, lowers the notes <laughs> of the, on the guitar. Um, but just a, yeah, just a good solid op- upbeat opening. Um, oh, I should mention how I discovered the band. Um, five years ago, um, I was home on Thanksgiving because I'm atheist and vegetarian, so Thanksgiving doesn't really do much for me. So I, I tend to skip the family gathering. I was home watching the uh, MST3K Turkey Day Marathon, and Christmas, uh, Christmas Disco Marie Sagan was on as a guest under her real name, Ashley Holtgraver, I'm going to guess on that pronunciation. Um, apparently she wrote in to Joel when she was like eight years old, and you know he had her on as a guest on, on the uh, Turkey Day Marathon <laughs> in 2015. Um, and you know she, during the course of the short interview, mentioned Freeze Pop, and she actually played a variation on the clo- on the, the MST three game theme on ukulele to end the show. Um that's on that part's on YouTube. Look it up please. Um so I'm not entirely sure if I've ever heard this band before this. I mean they're kind uh, of, you know, unknown. They're not very well known. Um they're into completely what? independent. I think their third album they partnered with um Reco Disc and then like so you know that got a little more press. But then they decide, no, we'd rather be independent. Like I could see them get, they, they probably have gotten some play mm-hmm. on like oh. XMU or, you know, somewhere, uh, you know, I, I forgot to mention serious XM dial. I was considering putting this in the uh, intro. Their music has been featured in a few video games. Um, Amplitude, Guitar Hero, and Rock Band. Those last two crack me up, a synth pop band and Guitar Hero and Rock Band. I, well, you could see how that would work, though, because there is a guitar player at yeah. work here, at least well, in the, the bring us back to this album. Well, he doesn't play guitar <laughs> that often, though. No, in the band anyway. He's got, Sean has true, like four other true. bands. <laughs> there, there, there is not much guitar playing going on. You're right. Yeah. Aside from that intro, yeah, a few songs have lead, have some lead guitar on him, but um, in general, in their music, Sean doesn't play guitar very often. He's got a handful of other bands. He does play guitar in some of them. Um, I've seen him play guitar with a band in like a small dive bar doing some Duran Duran covers. That was very cool. Um, so, oh, I, I'm right about my Duran Duran. <laughs> How about a couple of times here? Well, the interesting thing about their influence is because Sean writes most of Sean and Liz are the um, credited songwriters. I saw an interview on Monday Night Heard, I should say, an interview on Monday night on Geek Beat Radio with the band. And they did like a release party, played the whole album. Uh, and they said that um, Christmas and Bananas do contribute ideas, you know, here and there, but he and Liz do most of the writing. He writes most of the music. She writes the vocal melodies and the lyrics. Um, and if Wikipedia is correct, Sean and I are the same age. So we pretty much know all of his references. <laughs> <laughs> Many of which we're going to call out in this review. Um, on to track two, Heat Lightning Hot. This song is literally about watching heat lightning. Oh yeah. I read the lyrics. It is literally about going to the edge of town at night in mid in late July and watching Heat Lightning. I just love that that's what she took Liz chose to write a song about. Um So I mean this intro is of course totally a Nick Rhodes, you know, kind yeah, of yeah. keyboard intro. And then it moves into something I well, I guess I, I didn't know about the video game thing until now, but I would yeah, say it, it's very like that. But I was thinking TV on the radio. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I can hear that. Um, this is also the song with the guest whispers. I love the whispers on this song. It's just oh, one, yeah. one in the beginning, a yes at the very beginning, um, I, and I see it right before the instrumental break, which I love because at the end of the um, verse, or maybe pre-chorus, there's she says are we ready to begin and that's you know there's no thunder there's no rain uh, no rampaging hurricane strikes heat lightning you know lightning without a storm um and in after the second verse he we just hear i see it and then we get a little instrumental break and then the end after the entire song is faded like there's a beat after the fade is stopped yeah and then yes <laughs> <laughs> I just love how late that yes is. Um, but yeah, also on this love, that glitchy synth at the beginning. 
on uh, the great groove. There's a wonderful delay on her vocals. The there's almost always a bit of effect on Liz's vocals, some reverb, some delay. Um this is a weird comparison to draw, but she's kind of like Ozzy in that respect, where Ozzy always has effects on his vocals. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, a lot of synth pop will, will do this. Mm. I mean, if it's, yeah, you know, if you're looking to, to get, give us into a trance, you know, yeah. uh, and her vocals on this one are really good. I mean, there's some points where she comes off as flat or apathetic, but it's mm. very much intentional well, yeah, that, of just kind of... What was the description <laughs> that the, I read at the beginning? Um, sweet and cold and fruity and plasticky. <laughs> right, right. And, and then she... But that just makes when she soars yeah. that much uh, of a, more of an impact from it. Right. It's it's So you can easely see what she's doing. You know, because at first you're kind of like, oh, well, yeah, I guess she's not into this. And then, you know, just mm. <laughs> run up great dynamics not necessarily in terms of volume which is what we tom commonly think of dynamics in terms of but just emotional dynamics in her vocals right and it's also that she provides the contrast <laughs> herself yeah <laughs> she plays off her own vocal also love all the percussion on the chorus a note about the percussion on this record um well first off uh, i scream face as they referred to him in that interview is in the band now as a percussionist, but also I saw a, sh a little bit of a live stream that Sean did on Facebook um, a couple weeks ago where he was remixing one of the songs and he says said he likes to play the percussion part in real time. Instead of programming it, he, prefer he likes to play it on the keyboard in real time. And Interesting. the percussion on this album doesn't feel programmed to me. It breathes, it, it, it's human. It feels like it was all played in real time which in this kind of music is amazing. Yeah, I, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it... I guess some of it did sound feel live to me. I, I mean, mean, there might be some programming, but a lot of it, most of it to me, felt like, felt real, felt organic, because I don't care how good a human's timing is, they're not a machine. Yeah. You know, you're never going to be dead exact. And I can... He, I can feel that difference when it, there is that little bit of fluctuation. Um, um, also, uh, like you mentioned, the dynamics that that swell on the last the vocals that that last yes. that swell on the last note is beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. That's exactly what I was going for. Yeah. Um, and then this that, that like I said that pause everything stops everything is faded the song is over there's a beat and then yes. <laughs> I laugh every time I hear that. <laughs> on to track three, You're Awesome, It's Killing Me. Probably the best title on the album. Yeah, like lyrically to me, this is the first standout. I mean, I don't, mm -hmm. I didn't see, oh, they're, the lyrics are on Bandcamp, aren't yeah, they, for they each? Are. Yeah, the lyrics didn't of uh, Heat Lightning didn't really jump out at me until I read through them and realized she was actually just talking about watching Heat Lightning. It wasn't a metaphor. <laughs> Um, but back to your awesome, love the sort of, as I'll call them, lab sounds at the beginning. <laughs> we get kind of like a percolating sound and a little glitchiness. Yeah. It's, like a, it's like a lab. And then we, the percussion comes in before the vocals. We get into this thing that I'm calling the anime theme because it sounds like the opening theme of a bunch of different animes I've seen over the years. It's just this right. kind of insistent, you know, bright sort of music. There's kind of a fake out at work here. Like first, you think this is a, a downshift in the <laughs> very first, you know, few seconds, and then it, it just nope. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're still doing this. <laughs> and, and then we get to the verse, and it's this nice sparse arrangement. Yeah, um, more guitar. Um, this the guitar on this one sounds, and I'm going to reference this again later. Very new order. Very Bernard Sumner Ooh, kind of tone. That's a good call. Uh, for for the most part, I was thinking this one reminded me a lot of the Pet Shop Boys. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Uh, the the I don't recall them ever having this kind of a sense of humor, though. But you know, <laughs> yeah. Oh, freeze! <laughs> but I can, all about maybe, maybe. Yeah. I mean, this one might get my pick for strongest because oh, okay. it is like it is really uh, mm -hmm. it is really well put together. Mm -hmm. Love Sean's vocal on the chorus. He's the one who, one who sings, Why Are You Perfect? I just love the line, Why Are You Perfect? 
<laughs> and his voice kind of almost brings a gothy aspect to it. Because yes. he's got this full baritone kind of voice. Um, love the sort of laser sounds that come in on verse 2. And then there's this slidey synth solo. Reminds me kind of a stylophone. Um, a stylophone is an electronic instrument where you have you know this flat replica of etching of a, a piano keyboard and you actually play it with a stylus you you connect it you, you touch it to the keyboard and that circuit creates a, a usually a, a sine or a square wave and you move it around on the keyboard to create to, to go to different notes and it all you always slide it and this the solo kind of does that he kind of slides between notes um, which is an unusual thing to do on a keyboard <laughs> also some really great big crashes at the end I'm going to be referring to the percussion sounds as what how they function. I'm, I'm basically going to be using drum kit terms, even though they're all electronic. Yeah. Um, and I love that it goes out slowly. You know, it doesn't just ride out on that anime theme. Yeah. They go out nice and slow with this sound that, that if it were in science fiction, would be like a hole ripping in the universe. <laughs> now on to track four, uh, Fantasizer have to say because there has to be one every week this is my pick for weakest um i just it's, it's just kind of there that's it's it's fun it's a fun song but i feel like the, the chord progression is a little overused um it's not as strong as the other three but i i wouldn't say it's my weakest okay. the the sounds uh, a lot of the like her vocals uh like in the melody remind me a lot of like new pornographers okay. uh, the way she's like stringing all of those notes together. Mm -hmm. I, I can see this one growing on me in the future. Um, I, I do like the aggressive snare in the pre-chorus. I also, I do enjoy the line, I did a very good impression of bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice harmonies in the chorus. Um, nice dramatic instrumental break. Um, and and in the video, this is their, their I think this is their third video. Because, um, yeah, they, the first video was released over a year ago. Um, that's why it wow, took me a minute really? to, to realize. Um, they mentioned during that interview that they had planned to release this album last spring, but then oh. COVID happened. <laughs> so things got pushed back. So they released the first video in June of, I think June or July of last year. Um, but it, so shit. this is their third video for Fantasizer. And it's very much, it's just the band, you know, screwing around in front of a, a green screen dressed very eighties with kind of eighties graphics around them. Um, but at the end, they're all standing, all the band members are standing there with um, guitars on, including Liz, who doesn't play keys. And at the very end, Sean does that cheesy around the back thing that you've seen every hair metal guitar player do with a guitar. <laughs> I just kind of that, the Jimi Hendrix silly with the guitar. That killed me just because I, I know people. Who have in high school? I knew guys who actually put their guitars through walls trying to do that. <laughs> if you ever try that trick, use strap box or a washer. <laughs> <laughs> On to track five, the ghost rejoins the living. This is one of my two favorites. I can't narrow it down between two. Um, love the opening keyboard riff. Um, so we got some great new, more some more great new order style guitar. Love the vocal melody. Yeah, this one reminds me a lot of a, a Lady Tron uh, mm. kind of thing going on, and and I kind of expected to just be like, oh, this is just you know all going to be another Lady Tron thing. So the fact that I didn't, nothing reminded me of them until we were five songs in. Yeah, I think says a lot. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. There's some great insistent kick on the verse. We get to the chorus. The vocals overlap. I love when everybody and whenever anybody does that. One line just trails off and before it ends the next line comes in it's a simple trick but it just gets me every time um there's some great sl uh, slap back on the snare and the chorus uh and i just love the ending uh lyric maybe i'll rejoin the human race maybe i don't need to haunt this place it's about getting over a relationship basically um love the guitar and the outro it's this is one spot where he just plays one note on the upbeats it's a very simple thing but it just throws the the rhythm into such chaos on to track six the memory disappears this is an interesting one musically it's a well-placed ballad i think yeah yeah this is finally we, we finally do get that downshift <laughs> but we get these very 80s drum breaks 
Um, and then a great contrast between this driving bass and this almost dirge, almost dirge-like pace of the vocal. Um, it was killing me. I was trying to figure out which 80s band that they were going for. Like, I was thinking OMD or maybe Wang Chung. But then it hit me <laughs> that the sequencing they use, that, that really fast you know, sequence uh-huh. sound used by many 80s bands. But right. of course, the most famous soft cell okay yeah yeah yeah. these guys Tainted are love. super 80s influenced and, and <laughs> yes you know, sean and liz I, I know sean's my age i think probably liz is around the same so yeah they're children of the 80s um weird lyrics like it's it's about yeah. not reliving the past but it's also got this sci-fi twist to it um the chorus is they save it for a while a memory on file the machines won't look back. Why should you? They save it for a year till your memory disappears. All their tapes will corrode. Why should you? Why should you? Um, I would love to know if it was based on an existing sci-fi story or if it's something original and just kind of a metaphor. Um, love the second verse. Again, it's all about not reliving the past. Um, you can't relive this place. You don't survive by placing ghosts around your mind. They don't have voices now. They don't add up. Do you leave it all behind? Love that. Um, and there's a great drum break leading into verse two that just kind of comes out of nowhere. doesn't really fit the rhythm. It's just kind of, it, it just throws everything off for a second. And then we come back into that, you know, driving bass with the dirge like uh, vocals. And then in the second verse, we get this kind of Asian synth sound that is just so incredibly 80s. That's probably where I was thinking Wang Chung. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> That's probably where I was like, Wang Chung, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end, the, the guitar break at the end, just this incredibly beautiful crystalline tone. I re- would love to know what he was running through just to get this. Uh, it's this incredible chime on the guitar. On to track seven, our solar system. Maybe about the end of the solar system. Maybe a metaphor for leaving a toxic relationship. I'm not really sure. <laughs> um, great kind of chimey beginning at this of this one. This is gonna sound weird, but it kind of reminds me of something you'd hear at, on like an old like school film strip. Oh, I didn't think of that. I mean. I just think this is pure. Just I'm talking about the, little, the sound effect at the very beginning. What'd you say? Oh, okay. I, I was just gonna say this is just pure unapologetic eighty synth pop. Well, yes, and this one I kind of have to call them out a bit. Um, it is extremely reminiscent, and I have abed the two songs of Blondie's "Call Me." Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I don't think it was intentional. I think that song is just part of their musical DNA. Um, but yeah, it, they they went really close. Even the vocal, which is very you, mostly very different, but in at the pre-chorus kind of mirrors the bridge of Call Me. Um, but still, very fun song. Great groove. Um, love the bass line. And, and love the big clap snare in the pre-chorus and in verse two. And the huge snappy snare in the chorus. And I like how it slows down for the bridge. Um, it's just slows down to this you know from this big you know you've heard if you've heard call me you know that groove um then yeah, it just kind of i mean kind of steps call down it's a very simple you know kind of kind of groove to it mm-hmm. but uh yeah I, I don't know i think this one goes a little further than that i mean yeah okay. yeah it's probably easy to mm-hmm. fall into that groove because it's just i mean wasn't it almost that, I always thought that was pretty close to one of these days by Pink Floyd, even. Okay, yeah, you know, right. I mean, that's a good point. Which, um, which is kind of like also the Doctor Who theme, too. It's just, you know. Yeah, that, wow. Yeah, okay, good, good. <laughs> um, that's a good reference. Um, but it slows down for the bridge. I think that's that's not, that's really nice because then it builds. This riff just builds nicely into the final chorus and some great massive crashes on the fade. Um, on to track eight, Step Into the Sunshine. This is another favorite of mine. Um, before I put my list, you know, the one on my list, I will decide between the two. Um, incidentally, you haven't updated your um, best of list since like the beginning of the year. I know I haven't. And I actually, our solar system was a really close second for a favorite okay. on this. Um, but th- this one, I mean, I could see there's like a real Depeche Mode thing going on here. I, this is another one of my favorites. Um, 
the beginning kind of and i don't i've a would them it's not that close but it kind of for some reason reminds me of holding on holding out for a hero oh yeah um, i thought of that but i, I love that the... song in a long time dude <laughs> what'd you say i haven't thought of that song in a long time for some reason this one beginning of this one reminds me of it just this the very in, beginning of the intro um but i love the subject matter of this one it's about a ghoul like a rinfield kind of character trying to kill their vampire because the vampire said they'd make them immortal and they didn't <laughs> so the end of the chorus is you know step in what, step into the sun and be no more They're, she's trying to lure the vampire out into the sun to so the vampire will die because she's pissed off because the vampire didn't make her immortal um the, the, love this the second verse um baby i can help with your natural desire take my hand and let me lead the way come close come close to the fire meet me at the summit we'll turn this drama into into art because i don't have the stomach for a steak through someone's heart <laughs> <laughs> she can't bring herself to stake them so she's trying to lure them into the vamp into the sun um but great harmonies on the chorus love the interplay between the the kick and the bass it's a very simple rhythm it's a very simple rhythm that's just one and five on the bass with a simple insistent kick. It could go oompa very easily, but they ride that line very nicely. Um, nice sparse arrangement in verse two. Great delay on the vocal again. Um, love the heartbeat at the beginning of the bridge because it all slows down to, to a stop almost and then we get a heartbeat. And then in the bridge, she realizes that she's turning into a vampire. Oh, okay. You know, fading from the mirror and the, um, you yeah. know, the shadow disappears. There's there, and a sudden the, appetite. Okay. A sudden appetite fading from the mirror. She's turning it. Finally, you know, she kills her sire and then she turns into a vampire. She kills her sire for not turning her and then she turns. Um, but um, there's also mention of a body disappearing. I don't think it's hers. I think it's actually the sire's body after, you know, because of the sun. I, I'm assuming she had gotten is, into shade somehow. Yeah, that is usually the thing when when the vampire dies it disappears yeah yeah it will and depending on like the, the version of the myth you're talking about like on, on buffy they dusted because uh they didn't want to have a bunch of vampire bodies sitting around at the end of the episode <laughs> john sweden has <laughs> actually said that um so they just came up with this conceit that they turned to dust so they disappeared um and there's others that do that some actually burn if they, particularly if it's sun they did burst into flames um but Back to the song. Um, I love the riff at the end. It's sort of major and minor at the same time. He's going down. He's playing two notes and then going down a you know repeating the same note twice, going down a minor third, and then the line that's descending is just a major scale, but it's mirrored down a minor third. I don't think I explained that well, but it's kind of <laughs> minor and major at the same time. Love that. On to track nine, anchor to the world below. Um. More great glitchy synth at the beginning. Love the dramatic intro. This one is kind of gothy. Um, yeah, said another that, kind of Depeche Mode, you know, yeah. lead coming in. You mentioned Depeche Mode. This is very Depeche Mode. Yes, oh, definitely. Um, there's, on the verse at the end, there's this sort of creepy ascending uh, wordless vocal on the right side. Love that. Great harmonies in the chorus. Bananas sings the harmony the, on the on the chorus on this one it's the only time he's ever sung on one of the records he has a great voice he needs to sing more um love the trill at the end of the chorus and how the bridge builds to this with this great kick sound and this sort of a laser sounding snare like i i'm into the keys under the verse mm -hmm. i mean they add this urgency they're very subtle though but i'm not sure if i'm into the chorus or not <laughs> you know the chorus just comes off as very like a pop kind of sound yeah. you know to mm -hmm. me which is a little a little jarring <laughs> yeah, there is a contrast there because it gets very dark and gothy in the verse and it goes a bit pop on the chorus i like yeah. the contrast on to track 10 rare bird the intro on this one is pure nintendo <laughs> <laughs> actually the entire arrangement of the song is just pure nintendo um yeah and it, it could be an actual about an actual bird, or it could be about seeing a particularly attractive person. Um, it's just a really 
for lack of a better way of putting it, cute song about either look going out bird watching or going out and you know being you know basically called out, forced out of the house by a friend, and on the way to you know wherever you're gonna meet them, seeing this just particularly attractive person. Um, great snappy snare, nice harmonies on the chorus. Love the uh, timing change in the instrumental break, and how the tonality gets kind of a bit more complicated at the end. It goes a little, not quite minor, but it just gets a little more interesting in this song that is basically just, you know, like I said, Nintendo. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if I'm into this. This would probably get my pick for weakest mm-hmm. on the album. Um, it's a good place for a ballad, but yeah. I mean, it, it just... Uh, it's an odd song, I, I'll admit yeah. that. Um, and it ends with this hissing kind of, sound of almost sounds to me like a spaceship is landing and i'm kind of saying this half facetiously but it could but kind of works as a theory it sounds like a spaceship is landing at the end is this rare bird an alien <laughs> like i said just being half half getting there um on do track 11 the monster song this is the one with the video that was released over a year ago so i'm very familiar with the song so it's kind of hard to analyze it um it does feel a bit different than the rest of the album. You know, it's got a bit of a different feel, but I like it. Um, great insistent kick on the verse. I uh, like how the arrangement builds in the chorus. And lyrically, it is absolutely a mood during quarantine. Quarantine. It's about becoming a monster. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the chorus is, um, there's a monster in here. There's a monster I know. She needs your heart to survive. She was a person just months ago. There's a monster in here. There's a monster I see. She needs your heart to survive. She really terrifies me. You know, being trapped in a house for months on end. I get this song on a level. I didn't get it when it was released. And I mean, there's, despite that subject matter, there's a lot of, like, musically yeah. or atmospherically, there's a lot of pop to this. Oh, yeah, it's a very fun song, I mean, despite the subject matter. I, I, yeah. I think that's intentional. Yeah. It's a nice contrast. <laughs> Right, it, it is. It, it's got a great catch to it. Yeah, I um, love the roars in verse two when she's talk, talking about not don't go out in the forest. Um, it's just like a really fun upbeat song about turning into a monster. Um, on to track twelve, where we get into the ballads. Heart rate. Now, I'm I'm going to start with you. What did you think of this one? Yeah, you know, first it reminded me a little of churches, but the second listen, I'm not sure. I mean, it's it's got an interesting chorus to it. I like the softer keys in the in the chorus, but I think it could have used a little bit more of it throughout. This one reminds me a lot of the Cars, like Heartsby, Heartbeat City era. And I knew you famously don't like the Cars, which is why I wanted to start with you. <laughs> But love how slow and dramatic at the beginning is. Um, Liz has a very soothing voice, which works really well on these last two songs. Um, love the the sort of minor turn at the end of the verse. Adds some nice tension. Nice sort of impressionist lyrics. I'll say it. It they're not. They don't make a lot of sense. Straightforward. She's kind of alluding to something. Um, nice chimey part that kind of comes in midway through verse two. Love how the bridge kind of builds. Um, another great New Order guitar part at the end. Um, I hate to keep harping on you know, New Order. I, I I don't want to you know make it sound like I think Sean is ripping off Bernard Sumner, but that's about the closest <laughs> I can come to you know describing it. Um, I always think of Liam Lynch when I hear anything a little too gothic. I mm-hmm. was like, you can't see me because I'm wearing black. <laughs> Yeah, the guitar just go a little gothy at the end, which again, in in a band that is so poppy, they have pop in their name. Throwing a yes. little goth in is just just a beautiful contrast. Um, nice tense tonal change at the end, um, and finally on to track thirteen, clock clockwise. This is the big ballad. You know, this is the one that, you know to close on. They said in the interview that for a hot second, this opened the album. Uh, I mean, my notes say, holy Jesus and Mary Chain, Batman. <laughs> this would not have worked as an opening track. I'm glad they put it at the no, end. No, it would not have. Uh, I mean, those keys are, during the verse, are just like honey, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but love the, the kick sound. It's almost in the bass register. Nice, the hi-hat sound, too. Um, it's almost kind of sounds like a palm-muted guitar. Um, the vocals, nice and low in the mix, which works because the song is basically all by. Yeah. 
And there's something about the harmonies on the chorus that give me ASMR. Yes, I'm one of those <laughs> ASMR people. And there's something about the harmonies that cause that reaction in me. I don't know why. Um, I kind of wonder if something earlier from the album should have been put right before this, you know, because this acts as a perfect closing track. You mm -hmm. know, the album just kind of fades away, yeah. you know, gently. Um, but I wonder if it needed something big before this to like give like that whole climax of Instead the album. Instead of two ballads, or... yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that might have been a good idea. Um, but love the key, what sounds like a key change going into the bridge, and then it just fades nicely, nice and softly. Like I said, lullaby oh, yeah. to end on. Really yeah. nice move. So do you recommend it? Fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am so relieved. Um, this is your first time hearing Freeze Pop. I've been a fan, like I said, since 2015. I've had this album for two weeks because I backed it on Kickstarter. You just heard it yesterday. Um, I was going to say, th this has been like a really tough, you know, turnaround <laughs> time to yeah. like listen to as many times as I could over but, like not even 24 hours, <laughs> I don't think. On our tweet um, saying we were going to be reviewing this album with the video for Anchor to the World Below, um, Sean Drinkwater replied saying he'd be listening. Oh, well, in that case, they can go. No, never mind. So I've been very <laughs> nervous coming into this review because this is a band I wasn't sure if you were going to like. So I, I'm, I'm very relieved that you liked it as much as you, did, as you did. Obviously, I've been a fan for five years. I love this album, minus maybe one song. Um, I absolutely strenuously recommend it. Please check it out on Bandcamp. Buy it. It's only like seven bucks. <laughs> it's like 50 cents a track. And that's it for Fantasizer. Until next time, we, we've switched things around for a little bit. We were going to go into some Ellen Holdsworth next. That would have been a little too sharp of a contrast. Um, <laughs> and I honestly don't know how, I don't know if I want to subject you to Holdsworth because it's music that really, I think only a guitar player can love. But in lieu of Holdsworth, we're going to be doing some LCD sound system. It'll work nicely after, some free, after Freeze Pop. Specifically, we're going to be reviewing Sound of Silver. Yeah, I was trying to remember which one I have mm -hmm. since we made our list so long ago. Yeah. And so then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. There you are.